I'm a great believer in using your influence to make positive change in the world. Lots of our role models feel exactly the same, they've had fantastic lives, others have had more difficult lives, but it's so important that we use those stories to pass on ideas, to create change. It doesn't matter whether you're gay, Muslim, because uh, my family is Muslim as well, straight, not Muslim, we all deserve a chance to be successful, like to do well in school, um, and to do that without any problems growing up. Sadly, um, my mum passed away quite unexpectedly a few years ago, but I was really proud that I let her know who her son was, because really that's the only thing you want to be, you want to be honest with your family. My mum actually asked me if, if I was gay when I was about 18, and I had that moment where you go, oh, you feel like the whole world stops, and I said, yeah, I am, and I expected her to suddenly break into everything and tell me how horrible it was, and she, just, she was ironing at the time, and she just went, all right, love, and carried on. And it made me feel a massive sense of relief because I felt like I was hiding a massive part of myself for a very, very long time. They often don't realise that the language they're using or the behaviour um, that they're displaying is going to affect real people. And then they meet the role models and they think, wow, OK, I get this now. I understand that what I say and what I do is having a direct impact on these people who I like and who are honest with me and who have spent the last 15 minutes with me having a laugh, having a joke. The use of role models has been, has been really, really effective. They sort of see gay people originally as, as something totally different, someone that's, that's not like them. And actually, DRM sessions have been really effective in, in helping them to understand that a person's sexuality isn't necessarily their, their, their most defining characteristic. And actually, those people are just like their friends and, and just like them. I think the term that's so gay is kind of like using homosexuality as a negative thing, so it's kind of saying that homosexuality is wrong, which is a form of bullying, like you're saying that it's not something you should be proud of. I want you to be really honest, I want you to firstly put your hands up if you hear this phrase around school. Okay, and I want you to keep your hands up again, really being really honest, you're not going to get into trouble for this, if you use this phrase or any variation of it. To be honest, I don't think it's alright because if there's someone that, that is gay, then you're really hurting them, and then you, they're like changing their mind on whether they should be gay or they're like thinking about it, yeah. so it's Poor obviously you. not alright. There was a particular suicide here uh, of a boy called Dominic Crouch because he kissed a boy in a, a game of um, spin the bottle, and there was no inference that Dominic was actually gay, simply that he followed a deer along with other young people that night. But he was bullied. He chose to end his life uh, simply because he was labelled as gay. So the concept is that we speak to young people about this. It's not something you can choose, it's something that's set in stone when you're very, very, very young. And whether you realise it, whether you're young or not, you end up realising when you're older and you can't choose to be gay any way that you don't choose to be straight. You just It's just something inside you that you end up being. Form tutors come along sort of not really knowing what to expect. Um, and they, they leave feeling much more confident talking about the sessions with their, with their tutees in registration time. Um, I was involved in a session with the Year 11 group who are particularly um, anti-gay. We had a really, really good, lively discussion. Diversity role models have made us talk about the issue. They've made children vocalise the issue who normally wouldn't say a word because they are so anti. There's no form of discussion going on. We're now talking. We, we always alert our parents to the topics and themes that we're covering in lessons and, and, and the themes of the workshops and it's certainly not been something that parents have objected to. Parents have been very open-minded um, and we've had lots and lots of positive feedback from students. Um, Ofsted inspectors will now ask young people, do you hear the term gay in a negative way in your school? And, if, and depending on how pupils respond, they all ask them whether it's challenged directly, how is it challenged, what work is done around this. One of our transgender role models up in Liverpool goes into, I've seen her go into a school. They really, really like her. She's a really good laugh. They, they warm to her. And then they realise that she was born a man, but actually it doesn't make any difference whatsoever. Four years ago, I changed my gender and now I identify as a trans man. And I'm very proud of that. I was homophobically bullied, but not by, um, not by my peer group. It was actually by one of my teachers and he said to me is the reason why you missed my lessons was because you have AIDS like the rest of your friends and that was you know and that was kind of seen as acceptable and when I found out about diversity role models I felt off the back of that very very keen to be involved so I think it's nice for the children to see that okay this person was a girl but now they're a guy and it's like wow you know or like you know but not in a sort of sensationalised aspect. I find actually the teenage children and the children that I've seen in other schools have actually asked the most respectful questions I've ever had. We have quite a few straight allies who work from our partner organisations that come into schools and 
they get a huge amount out of it. A lot of them are parents, and so they are concerned about bullying. All, all parents worry about bullying, and they want to be able to speak to young people and relate to them. The person that goes into school gets a real opportunity to see how young people relate to each other and also to see that all of the things that the media might present about young people are actually not always that accurate. They're really good-hearted and they're curious. Right now we believe we are an inclusive organisation both for employees and for customers but we still know there is a way that we can go and be better still. The people in schools today are you know the, the leaders and the people of, of the corporate world for tomorrow. So for us it's a really important step. The first event that I did, one, it left me on a real high. At the beginning them being, you know, the whole body language and the responses to the questions being quite negative and then towards the end, you know, almost that total shift in how they feel but more importantly how they will treat other people. There's one school we went into that we decided to do some surveys before we went in. The views that came out of that school um, were horrifying. Gay people should all be put in prison, it's disgusting. They'd taken the time to actually write these words out. They were only tick boxes. We did our role model workshop and I read some of those responses. The looks on their faces, they were completely shocked. The, the challenge to them was as the older students they are role models themselves. And it really worked. You know, at the end of the day, we were approached by some of those students. There's a couple of Muslim boys actually who came up and spoke to us and shook our hands and said, thank you for coming in because we know those attitudes exist and we've seen lots of our friends change their minds today. We only need to look at 60% of pupils saying at the start of the session that it was okay to use the word gay as banter. An hour later, that had dropped to just 9%. So it really does make a difference and the impact is instantaneous and obviously very positive. I pledge to stop using the word gay in unnecessary terms. I pledge I will not call anyone gay or call anything they do gay. I pledge to accept anyone for who they are, never to make anyone feel alone, to be here for everyone. I will not say anything negative about gay people and I will also try and prevent others from doing so. I pledge to never use the word gay in a hurtful way. The thing I'm waiting for most is that I'm waiting for the day we receive a letter from a young person who says, you know, five years ago I was really struggling with what was going on in my life and three of you came in and talked to my class about that and I didn't say a word because I was petrified but that changed my life that day and you gave me hope.